and good evening, everybody. You know, it is March of 2020. We are well into the new year. And this month just so happens to be a very special month. It is Women's History Month. So I just wanted to come together with you and say a few words and talk about what the month is and what it means to me. You know, Women's History Month, I think, is about not needing men in any capacity. I don't want to talk to them. I don't want to look at them. I don't want to hear their voices. It's March, okay? Come back in April. Like Green Day said, whatever the fuck. Wake me up when when Women's History Month ends. That's a direct quote. And so what I'm telling you is every time I repair something that is broken in my apartment by myself, I level up to the next wave of feminism. And I live in a super shitty apartment. So I'm on like the 800th wave of feminism. There is no feminist text. There is no feminist scholar that can teach me anything. Because I got it. I've mastered it. Right? I'm like the boss of feminism. Other feminists should be asking me for advice. Because I'll tell you what. Maybe I don't understand intersectionality. But I can fix a garbage disposal. And of course it is very brave of me to admit that. It's brave, I think, for me to exist in the society as a woman on Women's History Month and during any other time of the year. It's, it's brave of me to come on here and say to you, I've listened to Green Day. I know that song. It's a famous song, but I know it. And I have to own that as a woman. Everything I do this month and every other month is brave because I am a woman. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's always easy, right? Especially during Women's History Month. It is of supreme importance that I do everything I can to be the woman I aspire to be as opposed to the woman I am, right? It's not always easy. I want to be a goddamn joy to be around, an absolute treasure, an extraordinarily charming young woman, but sometimes I fall short of that. It's not often, but it happens. You know, sometimes, and this is a secret, this stays between us, something breaks in my apartment that I cannot fix independently. And even worse, sometimes I have to call someone to help me who is a man, which makes me a sexist. Because calling a man for help is to say, oh, women can't do it. Women can't fix that problem. And that makes me a misogynist. During Women's History Month, if something breaks in my apartment that I need a man's help to fix, I have to leave it. I have to leave it until April. And I'll tell you this, I'm hanging in. Everything's okay. But we've had a couple of close calls, people. And I am absolutely terrified of letting down women and losing my status as the ultimate boss of feminism. And even worse still, is my propensity sometimes to fall short of being the woman I aspire to be, right? My ire gets the best of me. Every so often, not often, sometimes. And so, for example, something that makes me really angry is breakfast foods. I can't stand it. It's ridiculous. As an institution, it should be abolished. The concept of breakfast as a whole. What especially bothers me is people who have breakfast when it is not breakfast hour. We live in a civilized society that is not acceptable behavior. As a woman and as a patriot, I'm telling you that you are shirking your duty as an American by eschewing the laws that separate us from beasts. Okay? So I'm at work. And it's 4 p.m. I smell toast. Because we live in a civilized society, I jump to the first logical conclusion, which is that obviously I am having a stroke. Now, I'm a strong, independent woman. Even if I'm stroking out, I will not accept a man's help during Women's History Month. So I performed the stroke test on myself. Now, everything was fine. As it turns out, someone just happened to be making toast in the office. Now... Who do we think is respons- who- what kind of person do you think would be responsible for doing such a thing? A man, during Women's History Month, making toast like an animal in the office. I said, do I need to put on Green Day? What is going on? What is going on? Not during Women's History Month. Breakfast. Ridiculous. You know, but I digress because even as the self-proclaimed boss of feminism at level 800, there are other women who have contributed to society and made it better. And on this month, I recognize and celebrate those women and I am glad for them. 
there are also some women who have made things worse. Let me give you an example. I think Nancy Reagan was too short to be the first lady. And everyone thinks it all the time, and nobody ever has the chutzpah to say it. So I'm saying it to you now, in the middle of this Women's History Month. That woman was not sufficiently tall to be the first lady. I want you to imagine this. An enemy of the state walks into the White House, picks up Nancy Reagan, puts her on top of the refrigerator, and walks away. How is she supposed to get down? In fact, it is sexist for us to presume that that woman had the climbing abilities to get off the fridge. And let me ask you this. How many resources were we willing to devote to keeping Nancy Reagan off furniture? And what should we have been willing to devote anyway in the first place? I think during Women's History Month, we honor the women who kept Nancy Reagan off of those pieces of furniture while still asking ourselves, why was Nancy Reagan allowed in the White House? I don't understand it. Just absolutely insane. But things are different now. Nancy Reagan is no longer in the White House. Ronald Reagan is no longer in the White House, although I think he was tall enough to be president. But that's a question for Men's History Month. Now, we are lucky enough to live in a time where we can sound off about the things that are bothering us in real time, usually on social media. Gone are the days of staying up all hours of the night, writing letters to the Reagan campaign, asking how tall Nancy Reagan is, asking her to release her medical records so we can know for sure. Gone are the days of being called a rabid conspiracy theorist on the street, screaming in Times Square about how Nancy Reagan is wearing a stacked heel. And don't be fooled, America, because those don't provide the sort of ankle support that a short person needs. Now, we are facing much more modern issues that are prevalent to Women's History Month. And one example is the sequel to the Suicide Squad movie, Birds of Prey. Now, I saw Suicide Squad back in the day. And at the end of it, the only person who wanted to kill themselves was me. Like always, okay? Nothing had changed. And nothing ever will. I want you to remember that. Nothing will ever change. And there's nothing you can do about it. Some people, sexists mostly, will take this opportunity to say, were you even alive during the Reagan administration? How were you writing letters and campaigning in Times Square? Now, in a way, I wasn't born until the 1990s. So if you believe time is linear, absolutely I wasn't around to be doing those things. But that is an inherently sexist belief because it is Women's History Month and I am telling you I was there. And for you to be thinking, well, if she was born in the 1990s, it's impossible for her to have been there doing those things is so incredibly misogynistic because to tell me that it is impossible to have done those things is to tell every woman it is impossible for her to have done those things. And women can do anything. Especially during Women's History Month when we are all one woman because it's easier to remember us that way. And in a way, I think that's what Women's History Month is about. Right? We remember not every woman, but just one. We consolidate women into the sum of their most important achievements. And we take care to really erase the nuance with which they live their lives. Because is it important? I don't think so. And let me ask you this, the age-old philosophical question, who really gives a shit? And it's very brave of me to say that, I think. Because I am under incredible pressure, suffering more than the average woman, you could say, trying to maintain my status as lord of the garbage disposal, keeping my apartment in order, refusing to call my super, who is a man, because I'm terrified of being a sexist. And you might say, well, think of the suffering of women of color, how much greater it is in proportion to the suffering the white women have to endure. And factually, that's accurate. But I don't want to fucking hear it. Not during Women's History Month. You know, Susan B. Anthony once said two things. First, she said, I declare to you that woman must not depend upon the protection of man, but must be taught to protect herself. And there I take my stand. And the second thing was something racist. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was incredibly problematic. But I'll tell you this, that's somebody else's problem, okay? As I stand before you up to my ankles in toilet water, because the only person in the vicinity who can fix a toilet is a man, I'm dealing with my own shit right now. Literally. Do you think that's what Susan B. Anthony would have wanted from me? I'm gonna guess no. 
and it was women like her that really paved the way for me to be able to do all of the things I get to do today, right? I no longer have to get married. I can if I want to, and I hope I will, because I saw Fight Club recently, and that shit looked like a lot of fun. I thought to myself, it would be nice. You take your spouse to a fight club, and you just beat the shit out of each other, consensually, just once. And it was Susan B. Anthony that made me believe I could achieve that. And it wouldn't be Women's History Month if we didn't talk about the fact that at 21, I am too young to get married. But I keep seeing women younger and younger marrying these older men, and it just boggles my mind. Right? It reminds me of the time Seinfeld dated that 17-year-old when he was in his 40s. And that delighted me. I was so excited to hear it. Because that means that I can say now, at 21, I'm too old for Jerry Seinfeld. I'm just too old for him. It would never work. Think about the power that that has. Think about what it means to put something like that out into the universe forever. It's Women's History Month. So if you're older than 17, I want you to go to the mirror, look at your reflection, and say, I am too old for Jerry Seinfeld. I don't care if you're a man. Do it to show solidarity with women. You know what month it is, okay? Of course, it would hardly be Women's History Month if I didn't briefly speak about my relationship with my mother, a topic so sensitive I won't even bring it up in therapy. I won't even go to therapy for fear that they'll ask me about it. I don't have a therapist, okay? I won't do it. I won't go to therapy because that is how the government becomes enmeshed in your affairs, and I refuse to allow that to happen to me. Not during Women's History Month. Maybe in April. Maybe I'll think about it in April. Here's a problem with my mother. My mother hated me from a very early age. At eight years old, she pulled me to a Costco. She goes, you know, you could have been prettier. You should have been prettier. Now, one of her big problems was that my hair was always a frizzy, terrible mess. What she did not understand as a woman with straight hair is that I had some natural curl to my hair. When you brush curly hair, it makes it frizzy and terrible. So she spent all day, every day, telling me to brush my hair because it wasn't presentable, making things worse. So what I'm saying is this. The biggest contributor to the patriarchy is straight hair. Absolutely. They don't understand our suffering. They don't care to. Because suffering is on the path to suffrage. And if people with straight hair, if women with straight hair are going to stand in my way, I won't allow it. I will never go back to Costco again. They are a sexist institution for allowing that to happen to me. A curly haired child. A curly haired female child. But of course I digress. What is important during Women's History Month is to ascertain who is the biggest sexist. That is the reason for the month. That is why we come together and celebrate and remember. It is all a ploy for us to weed out the biggest sexist and publicly shame them into changing their ways or ultimately dispose of them. So let's take a look at the contenders. Nancy Reagan, the cast of Birds of Prey, Susan B. Anthony, my mother, you might be looking at this group and thinking, you know, something doesn't sit right with me about this. The notion of selecting a woman to be the face of everything that has held women back over the years feels wrong to me. And to that I say, you don't think a woman can do it. You don't think a woman can be a sexist, which makes you a sexist. Women can do anything, okay? Unless you're me in an apartment with a broken toilet. But back to the point. We're here to figure out to whom we can assign blame for our suffering. Now, the votes have been cast, but those don't matter because as a level 800 feminist, my vote counts 800 times as much as the rest of the voter pool. And I've decided to write in a vote. The biggest sexist, I think, is my broken toilet. And I've chosen that not just to bring us together, but to remind us that it is indeed the most insidious forms of sexism that plague us and will continue to plague us during Women's History Month and beyond. So when I call my super on April 1st and he says to me, Dear God, why didn't you let me know sooner? I would have been here immediately. I will not answer him. I will refuse to explain my reasoning because for him not to understand the importance of the month is a terrible thing, I think. Ultimately, I hope you've learned something here tonight. I hope you were able to exercise your right to vote by casting your vote for who is the biggest sexist. I hope you felt that your vote mattered, as indeed I felt my vote mattered when I voted for Bloomberg in the primaries. 
And I hope you've taken information that will allow you to be a better feminist and a better woman going forward into this month and beyond. To any men listening, this is not for you. Please ignore everything I've said as you would on a day-to-day basis. And to everyone else out there, I hope your Women's History Month is productive and fruitful. Have a good night.